Part 2, The Second Age, Chapter 3, The Line of Elros, Kings of Numenor, from the founding of the city of Armenelos to the downfall. Christopher Tolkien states that this chapter gives clarification of some apparent errors in the appendices to the Lord of the Rings, and it's a pretty short chapter. So we know that Numenor is founded in the year 32 of the Second Age, when Elros, brother of Elrond, ascends the throne in Armenelos at the age of 90. He takes on the royal name tar Miniatur, meaning High First Lord. And this name is in Quenya, the noblest of tongues on earth, and all the subsequent kings and queens of Numenor take on a Quenya name following this pattern, except of course for the last few rulers, but we'll see them in a bit. So Elros rules Numenor for 410 years. Now, keep in mind, when the remaining Edain in Middle-earth are given Numenor as a gift, they're also granted long lives, like lives that are much longer than average humans. But Elros is given an especially long life. He dies at the age of 500. And his descendants are also given a longer than average lifespan than other Numenorians. But no one will live as long as him. He's kind of a special case. And of course, everyone's lifespan on Numenor shortens in the future once the shadow descends on the island. The second ruler of Numenor is Elros's son, Vardamir Nolimon. He loves knowledge and lore. And indeed, his name Nolimon means man of knowledge. Once Elros dies, Vardamir chooses not to ascend the throne, instead giving the scepter to his son. However, he is said to have reigned for one year, even though his son is the de facto ruler during that time. And now, for many years after, it remains the custom for a king to give the scepter to his successor willingly, before he dies. At this point in time, kings are dying of their own free will, rather than desperately clinging on to life. So, the third ruler of Numenor is Tar Amandil. He rules for 148 years. His son is the fourth ruler, Tar Elendil, and he rules for 150 years. This king is also called Parmaite, meaning book-handed, because he writes many books and legends of lore. As you learned from cha two chapters ago, during his reign, Numenorean ships first come to Middle-earth, about 600 years after the founding of the island. And his oldest child is a daughter called Silmarien, if you recall, and we know she's the ancestor of the lords of Andunie, and eventually Aragorn. The fifth ruler is Tarmeneldur, and we see a lot of him in the chapter before this one. He rules for 143 years. His name means Servant of the Heavens, and this is fitting because, as you know, he loves stargazing. He hands over the scepter long before his death. He lives 59 more years after this, so that his successor, Aldarion, can handle the difficult matters of lending aid to Gilgalad in response to Sauron rising in the east. So, the sixth ruler of Numenor is Tar Aldarion, and he rules for 192 years, surrendering the scepter to his daughter. We know his birth name is Anardil, and... Aldarion means son of the trees because he likes to cultivate and manage forests for timber for his ships. We also already know that he changes the law of succession in favor of his only child, his daughter, so that the oldest daughter of a king can become ruler if the king has no older sons. And you can read all about Tar Aldarion in the previous chapter. The seventh ruler is the first queen of Numenor, Tar Ankalime. She rules for 205 years. That's the longest of any ruler after Elros. And as we see in the last chapter, she marries Halakar to spite her male cousin Soronto by preventing him from gaining the scepter. But she doesn't really want to be married, so their marriage is an unhappy one. And she neglects her father's Middle-earth policies and does not aid Gilgalad despite the rising shadow. And her son, Tar Anarion, is the eighth ruler of Numenor, and he rules for 114 years. There's really not that much information about him, though. The ninth ruler is Tar Surion, and he rules for 162 years. And he's actually Tar Anarion's third child, but his two older sisters both refuse the scepter. 
His daughter becomes the tenth ruler and second ruling queen, Tartelperien, and she rules for 175 years. And she doesn't get married ever, so after she dies, the scepter passes on to her nephew, the son of her brother. And he is called Tarminastir, and he rules for 138 years. He builds a high tower near Andunie and uses it to gaze out into the west with great longing. So even though he loves the elves, he also really envies them. He's the one who sends a great fleet to help Gilgalad in the War of the Elves and Sauron. And if you notice a discrepancy in the years of his reign with the corresponding years of this war, then you are not mistaken. Good eye. In the notes for this chapter, Christopher Tolkien says he can't really explain why the dates are off. It must have just been a mistake his father never got around to correcting. So during Tar Minastir's reign, the Numenorians begin to establish permanent settlements in Middle-earth, and he is said to be one of the last, quote, good kings, unquote, of Numenor as his successors start to get greedier and greedier. The twelfth ruler of Numenor is Tar Kiryatan, and he rules for 160 years. He is a mighty king, but he's also greedy. He builds a great fleet that goes to Middle-earth and brings back much wealth, but it's at the expense of the men of Middle-earth. And before he takes the scepter, he voyages to many places. It is said that he pressures his father to give up the scepter before he wants to, thus giving first indication that a hint of the shadow has entered Numenor. The thirteenth ruler is Tar Atanamir the Great, who rules for 192 years. He's proud and greedy like his father, and exacts heavy tribute from the men of the coasts of Middle-earth. During his time, the shadow fully descends upon the island because he speaks openly against the ban of the Valar. You know, that rule that says mortals can't come to the Undying Lands, and now many Numenorean's hearts are turned against the Valar and Eldar. However, they still have enough wisdom because they still fear the Valar, all right? And let me draw your attention to the dates of his life and his reign. Notice his death date is the same as when he gives up the scepter. He's the first ruler of Numenor so far who refuses to give up rule when he is still alive and well, instead preferring to cling to it while he is decrepit and dying. The fourteenth ruler of Numenor is Tar Ankalimon, who rules for 165 years. And during his time, the rift between the King's Men faction and the Faithful, you know, the people who still hold an affinity for the Eldar, widens. Yeah, so there's a bigger rift, and many of the King's Men stop using elven tongues. However, royal titles are still given in Quenya out of a superstition that not doing so would bring bad luck or be an ill, o- be an Ill omen or something. The 15th ruler is Tar Telemaite. His name means silver-handed because he's obsessed with Mithril. He rules for 140 years. The days of the descendants of Elros begin to wane during and after his time. You'll start to notice rulers dying younger and younger, starting with his heir. So his heir, the 16th ruler, is the third and final ruling queen, Tarvanimelde. Uh, She rules for 111 years. And she cares a lot more about music and dancing than ruling, so her husband, Herukalmo, winds up actually wielding the power in her stead. He takes the scepter upon her death and styles himself Tar Andukal, thus usurping rule from his son. But this is illegal, so he's not counted among the ruling kings of Numenor. The 17th ruler is Tar Alkarin, son of Tar Vanimelde and Herukalmo, and he rules for only 80 years, even though he's actually the rightful king for a hundred. Tar Kalmakil is the 18th ruler, reigning for 88 years. Sauron hates him because in his youth he's a great sea captain and wins many lands and much influence across Middle-earth, thus causing Sauron to retreat further into the east and just kind of bide his time. The king's men refer to him by his Adunaic name, Arbelzagar, and this hasn't happened before, people openly calling a king by his Adunaic name, and not by the Quenya name. The next ruler is Tar Ardamin, and he reigns for 74 years. 
His Adunaic name is Ar Abatarik, and he's the last ruler to use a Quenya name for his official title. The 20th ruler is Ar Adunachor, and he rules for 63 years. And as you can see, he's the first Numenorean ruler to officially take an Adunaic name. However, still out of superstitious fear, his Quenya name, Tarherunumen, is still entered in the scrolls, like the history scrolls. His name means Lord of the West, which is really blasphemous because it's a title reserved for the Valar, especially Manwe. During this time, the people stopped teaching or using elven languages, except for the faithful, who speak them in secret, and the elves of Tol Eresea come to visit much more seldom and only in secret. The 21st ruler is Arzimrathon, who reigns for 71 years. The 22nd ruler is Ar Sakalthor, who reigns for 69 years. The 23rd ruler is Ar Gimilzor, and he reigns for 75 years. At this point, he's the greatest enemy of the faithful, punishing anyone who uses elven languages and or who welcomes elves to the island. He outright bans elves from coming to Numenor, and he never goes up to the Meneltarma to worship Iluvatar. His wife, in Zilbeth is secretly one of the faithful, so their marriage is not a happy one. But their eldest son and heir, in Ziladun, is like his mother. But Argimilzor would much prefer their younger son, Gimilchad, to become king. The 24th and penultimate ruler of Numenor is Tarpalantir, i.e. in Ziladun, who reigns for 78 years. His name refers to his farsightedness, uh, Palantir, you know, the seeing stones. Uh, he repents the actions of his corrupt predecessors and would love to go back to the faithful friendship with the elves and reverence for the Valar. He pays his obeisance to Iluvatar on the Meneltarma, but no ship ever comes back to Numenor again out of the west because of the insolence of all the preceding kings and the hardness of the majority of the Numenorians' hearts. His younger brother, Gimilchad, openly defies him and plots against him. Tarpalantir marries late and has only one daughter, Miriel, who is his rightful heir. But once he dies, the son of Gimilchad, Farazon, takes her to be his wife against her will and usurps her throne. Thus, the 25th and last ruler of Numenor is Ar Farazon, who rules for 64 years. Even though he is the mightiest of the kings of Numenor, he is also the worst. And we see in the Silmarillion the account of the downfall in which Arpharazon leads a huge armada to the Undying Lands and dies there. And unfortunately, Miriel also dies in the inundation of Numenor.